please welcome the vocal Jim, Jim Emery. Fifteen seconds. What will you do? The Toastmaster introduces you. Please welcome the vocal Jim, Jim Emery. And the audience awaits your start. Those who know you, oh, Jim Emery speaking today. I always learn something from his speeches. Those who don't know you, Jim Emery. Hmm. I hope he's worth my time. Either way, you now have your audience's attention more than you will at any other point of your speech. They're sitting on the edge of their seats. What will happen in the next 15 seconds? Well, if you're like many Toastmasters, your first words are, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, I call these seven words the Toastmasters mantra. They take six seconds, seven if you put the words thank you at the beginning. The crowd that knows you, or, or at least knows me, is thinking, hmm, did the Toastmasters culture finally catch up with Jim? And the crowd that doesn't know you, uh, particularly the non-Toastmasters, is thinking, same old Toastmasters start. Why do they always do that? And then you continue. Your next words. Good morning, everyone. Three to four seconds plus a pause. Everyone ignores you. And then how is everybody today? Four seconds followed by five plus seconds of uncomfortable silence. And then I want to thank Pat and Matt for the opportunity to share with you this morning. Seven seconds plus a pause. Everyone yawns except maybe Pat and Matt. You have now lost your audience. So what's the point? The point is that the first 15 seconds of your speech are absolutely the most important. You either grab the attention of your audience or you lose it. Every credible speaking coach will tell you that. Every article on best speaking practices tells you that. Even Toastmasters tell you that. And yet we consistently fail. Now, a few counterexamples. Most of us who are Toastmasters know about the World Championship of Public Speaking. Not one winner of the World Championship of Public Speaking in the past 10 years has started with the Toastmasters mantra. Now, outside of Toastmasters, none of the very best and most highly paid professional speakers start their speeches with anything like this. And I'll have some examples later. Actually, a couple good examples were this morning. Jackie's and Michelle's speeches were great examples of how to start a speech. So if the best, if the very best don't do this, why should you? So why do many of us fail? We want to be polite. I mean, this is the land of Minnesota nice and polite Canadians. We want to be respectful. We want to be friendly. We saw other speakers, other Toastmaster speakers do this. Or maybe we just don't have a better idea. Okay, Jim, so what should we do instead? I have a bold recommendation for you. Skip the polite stuff. If you want to thank people, by all means do it, but do it offline, not during your speech, and especially not in the first 15 seconds. Then eliminate all the upfront small talk that lets your audience drift away. Just get introduced, wait for it, especially if there's applause, smile and take a deep breath and then 
dive right into the most important concept in your entire talk. How do you start? There's a lot of great ways to start. We've seen a couple of them this morning. You can start with a high impact story. Maybe a story that starts something like this. Joe's last speech saved my life. Wow, now you've got the audience's attention. They're right there and they want to, they want to know the story. Or maybe you can start with some truly striking information. Something like this. A recent McKinsey study says that automation or AI will eliminate your job within the next five years. Whoa. Now you have their attention. Everybody in the audience wonders, my job, oh my gosh. Or you can start with a really tough question. Not one of those wimpy, how many of you have ever kind of questions, but a really tough question. This is a group of Toastmasters. How about starting a speech with this? What's holding you back from getting a DTM? That would get my attention. I would be ready to listen to the rest. But whatever it is that you use to start your speech, be creative, be bold, and deliver it boldly. Now you have their attention. Now you can keep it. Now, many of you, maybe most of you are thinking, but this is heresy. <clears throat> I mean, you're all thinking to yourself that the seven word Toastmasters mantra Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, is part of who we are. Curiously, I've looked really hard and I have found no Toastmasters published documents or videos that say you should do that at the beginning of your speeches. Somehow people just learn, learn it by watching other Toastmasters. Are you thinking, well, well, but it shows respect for our audiences. Well, maybe, but it kills your start every time. Or you're thinking, but every Toastmaster does it. It's expected. I'm reminded of my mother asking me if every other kid jumped off a cliff, would I do that too? <laughs> or maybe you're just thinking, oh, but what can it hurt? Well, what can it hurt? The first 15 seconds. So I have some examples that I'd like to close here with of some in very wonderful speeches. And I'm going to play the first 15 seconds of each. The first is the most watched TED Talk of all time. Uh, it's, it's called The Puzzle of Motivation, and it's by a fellow named Dan Pink. After the applause dies down, these are the first 15 seconds of Dan Pink's TED Talk. I need to make a confession at the outset here. Uh, a little over 20 years ago, uh, I did something that I regret, something that I'm not particularly proud of, uh, something that in many ways I wish no one would ever know. <laughs> yeah, and you're on the edge of your seat saying, yeah, yeah, tell me what it is, tell me what it is. And then he goes on to confess that in a, in a fit of youthful indiscretion, he went to law school. <laughs> but that, that setting up the tension at the beginning has you right on the edge of your seat in a wonderful way that he has your attention the rest of the way. The next example is from the 2017 Golden Globe Awards. Uh, this is a speech by Oprah Winfrey, who has just been awarded the Cecil B. DeMille Award for outstanding contributions to the world of entertainment. This is the first 15 seconds of Oprah's spe acceptance speech. In 1964, I was a little girl sitting on the linoleum floor of my mother's house in Milwaukee, watching Anne Bancroft present the Oscar for Best Actor at the 36th Academy Awards. Yeah, yeah, she sucked you right into a story right off. None of this, 
Thank you to the Academy. None of this, oh, all the other nominees were great. None of this, I need to thank this person, that person, that person. The first thing she does is she starts right into us with a story. She then actually goes on to describe how hearing Sidney Poitier become the first black to win an Oscar had a monstrous impact on her. And that story sets up her speech in a way that not, nothing else could do. Story got you there. And then the final example is maybe the most famous American speech ever. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Now, most of you, probably all of you have heard this speech. Most of you know the I Have a Dream section of this speech, which is way down towards the end. But many of you may never have heard or may not remember how King starts this speech. If you recall the context, he is on a, a giant podium at the, uh, at the Washington Mall in front of thousands of, of people in, on the mall. And he is there, this is the March on Washington, and he gets introduced. And after the applause dies down, these are the first 15 seconds of King's speech. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Yeah, and the crowd is ready to hear the rest. That by itself put, put his whole speech in context, grabbed the attention of the audience for why this was important. A wonderful example. So, for your next speech, you get introduced. Please welcome the vocal Jim, Jim Emery. The first 15 seconds. What will you do? <laughs> <laughs> 